There we go. I think my mic's in the right setting. Unless it's broken. Why is it weird? Never mind. I'm just stupid. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mortal Webs. I'm I'm Brandon. I'm the guide. Oh, wait. It says Dungeon Master for some reason. Why does it say Dungeon Master? Hold on one second. That's not right. Today is the super yeah. secret dungeon mission. Wow. That was last week. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I'm the guide. Introduce our cast, starting with Sky. Why? I fixed my name. Hey, everybody. I'm one of the cast. I play Dr. Harlow. We're here to commit war crimes. We got a level up last episode, which is super great because it leads to more war crimes. More. Over to you, crime. Jackie Hartstrong. <laughs> Over to you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Hello, I'm Jackie Hartstrong. I am the resident fighter. Um, I have a lot of titles. Uh, for anybody who's not been around for a while, I'm also the Gauzman, Champion of Children, Slayer of the Undead, Judge of the Unworthy, the Icebreaker, Beater of Broken Branches, and sometimes John Ray Coldthorn. And I'm going to pass the mic to our man on sports. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks, Jackie. I'm John. I'll be playing Guardian Barrelheart. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> Full stop. Let's do a little recap of last week's episode, or last time's episode, because our schedule is chaotic as hell and everybody's busy. Uh, last time on Mortal Webs, you guys entered the mysterious cave in the Alpha Tree Forest after being directed to go there by the Dweller King. Uh, as you entered, you ended up encountering a man that you once encountered before on the ship some time ago. His name was Lur, uh, Lacoran, and he revealed to, to you that he was an Ashen elitist. And on top of this, he also revealed a bunch of other mysterious information that happens to be the truth, or at least, at least his side of the truth, his perception of the truth of what actually happened so long ago with the Colossi and why they were sealed away. After hearing the, hearing the truth that Melarius, according to him, are the bad guys in this scenario, rather than, you know, the Ashen, you got into a very heated argument and conflict that ended up in battle. Jackie was greatly wounded. Gardane held a front very strong, and Harlow was able to at least keep Jackie alive with healing magic, and also deliver almost a mortal wound of sorts to Lacoran. However, in the midst of combat, in the midst of combat, the party spoke to Lacoran and informed him that how do they know? How would they know that his truth is the real truth? Wires across somewhere in which he disappeared right before he was about to die. In his death, suddenly three squirrels appeared in this cavern, and those are the squirrel children of Icorna. You guys brought the acorns here into this cave to try to get some more information, and you learned that a very similar situation happened here that happened in the cave of Ladoba, where you found the crown and other artifacts and so forth. These three squirrels came alive on the ground, a red one, a blue one, and a green one, and now sit upon your shoulders. Icorna speaked out to you and told you that all the creatures were sealed away with magical ritual sealing powers, and that you need to release them to restore the world to what it once was. However, releasing them could come at very grave consequences. And that's where we're starting this week's episode. I'm going to turn off the super mystery trumpety music now and get something more serious on. Oh. Uh, so, I want to get you guys' thoughts. Yes? I kind of made him, like, a ticking time bomb for when we were fighting him. But if we ever, let's see, come across someone we think might be a problem later, but we want to kind of test drive them, see how they do, I can, uh, turn them into a walking time bomb that detonates after just one whole year. And then they die. Hmm. Fun fact. That seems really immoral. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think people can change? No. No, I don't. As Why you would they? As you stand in this cave, speaking, not knowing kind of what to do, revealed to you that you cannot simply just break this curse to free the dwellers to their normal state. That it takes much more than that. It takes releasing the Colossi to truly break whatever this curse in the ceiling is that happened here. The three squirrels sit in front of all of you. One of you has selected individual color. I forget which color who chose. What colors did you guys pick again? Uh, Fairly certain I took blue. Yep, I know that Jack is a green. Had, yeah, right? I had yeah. green. Carla took red. Yeah. Okay. The squirrels stand. They look at you. Their heads turn. And suddenly, they speak out, and they say, 
in unison, almost a tripled voice at the same time. Our father has given us to you to take upon your journey. To, to where? To wherever the star shall lead us to free my brethren, or to free my father and his siblings. Who's this talking to us right now? The squirrels. The squirrels. The squirrel just in, started talking. In unison, yes, all three all of them. Three. I'm gonna just... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's the ground, and the, the one speaks up to you. And he goes, that was not very nice, Mr. Jackie Hotstrong. Uh, you're not supposed to talk. What? We are magical color for squirrels, and our father was practically a god. He spoke to you. As you say. Okay, my apologize. What's your name? Oh. Wait, huh? Red, green, got blue. Yeah, I, I got the names. There have, the red one speaks up and goes, My name is Rat. The blue one speaks up and goes, My name is Tess. And the green one speaks up and says, My name is Kerr. Rat Tasker. We are. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, I almost feel like I've heard some type of string like that before somewhere. Uh, so are, are we just following you guys? Are y'all just gonna... Oh, no, we are here to help you. So you're our minions now. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you're sitting there going, whoa, 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 wait, wait, we are, we are here from our father. You brought us back to life. You took the squirrels and, or the acorns and brought them back here and put them to where we were sealed, released us. Our father has given us the blessing to travel with you. The world must become a better place. Now, we cannot offer much. We can offer guidance and assistance in certain ways. We are just magical squirrels, but... We are here, nonetheless, to help the best we can. What is your version of a better place? Because I feel like a lot of people have a lot of opinions about that lately. And uh, what does a better place look like to you, Rhett? My red little squirrel. We're going to put on some serious music. Oh my god, please be blood, blood and gore. Uh, please be the demonic squirrel. I'm going to let this music kick in. I'm going to lay Odin down Look real quick. Tear. Because he's got to lay down. <laughs> and then we'll get to the seriousness. Okay. I don't know if I trust these talking squirrels, gang. I kind of want a squirrel army there, Jackie. That'd be really cool. A squarmy? We all know. A squarmy. We all know 15 1 1 squirrels can take down a god. That is true. They call me Squirrel Girl. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can ride mine. Can they grow in size? He said his dad was a god, like he's all tough and shit. So I just like, how tough are you? I want to find out. Yeah. Can all right, Pete Betty White. Throw him harder. <laughs> okay. I had a question for my squirrel. Yes. Hey, Kerr. Yes? Can we like ride you guys into battle? Oh. Well, not yet, you can't. Grow! That's not how this... Where, anyways, you say they all speak in unison when you ask what a better place should be. And they all look at each other and kind of like stand next to each other and all looking up at you. And they say, Well, you see, our father and his siblings, they were protectors of these lands. They wanted it to be safe. They wanted to make sure that humanity, mankind, animals, creatures, and everything thrived on. Continued to grow the world and watch it blossom in all of its beauty. They were here to make sure that that happened. However, greed of humanity took over, causing them to want the powers of our father and his siblings. We don't wish to cause destruction, chaos, and bloodshed through the world. We simply want our father and our aunts and uncles freed to restore the balance once more, to restore the world to the beauty that it should be, to allow humanity to thrive, to allow everybody to live in peace once more. However, to obtain peace, sometimes there are sacrifices that must be made. People will, unfortunately, die on this journey. And hopefully it's the wrong type of people. The type of people that do not want peace amongst the world, the type that want to ensue chaos, and the type that wish for nothing but power. We are here to guide you along this journey. In whatever way that we can to help free our father, our aunts, our uncles, to return balance to the world once more. Now, it appears that you have learned a truth, all of you. Or at least, 
a perception of the truth. Everybody views things differently throughout the world and situations that it happened. And again, I am afraid to say what that man that you fought earlier said was not necessarily wrong. However, was not also necessarily 100% true. Everybody made mistakes trying to seal the Colossi away. However, that was a long time ago. It's time for forgiveness, and it's time for the world to be at peace once more. That is all we wish, and that is all our father wishes, and that is all his siblings wishes. However, Grandpa, as you could say, their father, Turotar, has different plans. There's a reason he sided with the Ashen. And unfortunately for the world to become full of balance once more, the Colossi must be released in some way, shape, or form. And Turotar must be destroyed to take away the power from the Ashen that they have, that they worship and gain from him. If he is still alive, then surely we cannot win this war. Only through chaos and destruction can we ultimately obtain peace. You know... You're really happy after chaos and destruction. I think you're my favorite squirrel. They were all speaking the same thing in unison. Oh, it was like, I know. It was like, but Rhett is still my favorite. They go, thanks. <laughs> so we will show them our peaceful ways by force type deal. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Yeah. For the greater good, as you could say. Sure, yeah. The I mean, greater good. As, as as long as you guys don't plan on, I don't know, enslaving anyone afterwards. And but that's not, no, we quite literally, that's not. I know. Holy shit, what? <laughs> all the squirrels well, like, wait a minute, we just back hey, away from Harlow. Some people just say all sorts of things to get you to do what you want. And looks like that's what happened to the Ashen. They're a bunch of Stepford wives, so. You oh. must understand. Well, you may not think highly of the Ashen. They are very powerful. They have magic from Turotar. This stupid name. Mm -hmm. But he's absolutely, he's actually terrifying, but yes. Let's go drop bombs on Turotar right now. I. What? Are there any, uh, like, pictures of Turotar where he would see it and we could scribble on it and make him real mad? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's. They just let all the state look at each other like, what? <laughs> but no. Okay. Chaos and destruction. Hello. What? what? How about we I, use these squirrels as bait? That's got to bring out Turo. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> they just back up. <laughs> They're just like, if they saw, if they knew you squirrels were here, they'd probably come running right to us, and we wouldn't even have to look for anybody. There's a, <laughs> however, the problem lies. You see, this cave that you stand in right now. Mm hmm It is neither here nor there. Okay. The, the well, caves that you have entered before. They are not part of this plane, but also are part of the plane. They're essentially a space in between spaces. There's much more to this world that you need to learn. For example, Melrius is not the only kingdom, continent, or I guess you could say realm of sorts that is on this planet, for there is another. That's not true. Everybody knows that the world's flat. That is 100% wrong. That is very wrong. Jackie Hart Strong. Uh, the literally, education system has let you down. I've seen the edge. You and many others have. That is simply nothing but an illusion. Again, the magic of Turotar has led the people of Melorius to believe for hundreds of years that it's just them. This is the only place where there's much more beyond the ocean borders. Much, much more. So you're saying we need a boat? A boat will simply not do it. You can make yourself to the edge of the border of the ocean, however you would simply would just find yourself at the, another end of Melrius. You'd fall off. You would... No, that's not... No. Met, no. Guaranteed you fall off. I'm gonna put him to sleep. No, I want Jackie awake as he sees us fall off. In order for us to make our way to the world of the Ashen, to take the fight to them... To end Turotar's power that he grants the Ashen, the Coloss the magic of the Colossi must be released. Only then, with their combined efforts and power, can they break the curse and the charm they have put on your world. You're making my head hurt. 
So we're, right now we're neither here nor there, but we have to go somewhere that's an illusion. Right? This place where the Colossi were sealed mm -hmm. is a plane within planes. What does that mean, Squirrel? That means that's... The mirror realm. Yes, he understands. How do you think that that Ashen one so simply was able to just be here when you got here? He magicked us. He simply managed himself here. Because yeah, they had and then he waited like six it. weeks. Well, it was like a day, but you know. Well, then he lied. Anyways, I'm... point being, these caves are magical in nature. The Colossi were sealed away from a plane within a plane, and the only way to get inside of them is for three different reasons. One, the Ashen let you in because they are controlled the curse. Two, you are given a blessing from one of the Colossi, which it seems that you were with Ladova. Or three, you obtain and have one of the artifacts of sealing, which you have some on you right now, including us. I think we're all three mm -hmm. of those. Very possibly. So what say thee, friends? Uh, if I remember correctly, shortly before our interaction with our ashen friend, we were discussing on whether we were going to go to the desert or to New Lefana, and I think we agreed upon going to the desert realm. Correct? Yeah. Is that what you... Yeah. So... With these, uh, so you wish to go to Amur? <laughs> Amur, Der, yes, that's that. <laughs> they just Judas. Look, no, <laughs> Judas, no. <laughs> Fucking love that skit so much. In Amur, you will find. <laughs> in the kingdom of Amur, you will find, at least somewhere, Teratar, or at least his artifact of sealing is in Amur somewhere. The giant sand tortoise, defender, steel guardian. The problem with Thirotar, or sorry, the problem with Eldriki is he is not so kind hearted as you would say Ladova or our father was. Wants the same thing, a little stuck up, I guess you could say. I think that'll be fine. I'm not really kind hearted either. I think we'll be two peas in a pod. Steel Defender sounds rather rigid. Mm -hmm. I say we fight Turtle Tar today. Oh, it's and not just get it over with. <laughs> I would say fighting more or less. You will see when you get there. It's a he's just he basically he's an asshole. That's that's about it. Wants the greater good. He's just kind of a dick. Well, he's yeah. gonna catch these hands. <laughs> he's a weird man. Safely find him. Squirrel gang. It's not about. I, I'm with you, squirrels. It's not about I finding him. It's about finding his artifacts of sealing. It's about mm -hmm. stealing his stuff. I, I, pro I proxy, yes. Actually, yeah, kind of. Find his artifacts of stealing. It is somewhere in Omer. We will be there to guide you. Amazing. You'll be great little accomplices. We got to make a gauze outfit for Mer. Mm -hmm. Or he can't hang out with me, really, while we're doing justice, yes. fighting crime. You, you're, Harlow. you're Squirrel? Dr. Harlow. Yeah, yeah. His, his, yeah. Squirrel's name is Mer, by Her. the way. Her. Her. His uh -huh. name. Her. Rat task. Uh, everybody knows squirrels are boys and guinea pigs are girls. Duh. Okay, so. I'll Rat get task. Some gauze. You see, I'll get some gauze. I'll make little eye things. We'll get little. You see, Kerr is just like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> this is your shysty. Uh, costume. Your gauze lad. I gauze gauze. Lad. I just father would not approve. <laughs> Fuck it, fine. <laughs> I'll give Gosling. my a scalpel and a gun. <laughs> Don't you do this. <laughs> Don't you do you, this. You see that? You see that courage? Like, oh, wait a minute. Let me see. <laughs> do you give? Okay. Do you give the squirrel in a gauze costume the gun? <laughs> yeah, why not? Here you go. I'm just going to roll a d20, see if he fucking figures how to shoot it. Um, 10 and above Triggers he does. right there. He's a squirrel. Powerful. He got an 18. Yeah, he definitely fires. It just poof, shoots, goes, holy shit, and drops. He goes, nope, don't want that. Oh, okay. Well, Rhett will probably be a better shot anyways. Okay, Rhett, so let's work on shooting. Yeah, he goes, yeah, no. No, we are here as informational guard. We don't. We are not fighters. Okay, here's a scalpel. It's, he just... 
holds it like a fucking pole arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. Just, and what am I to do with it? We, you see, they're all confused. Like, they did not expect this. Is, this was not how this conversation was supposed to go. So you take the pointy end and you do <laughs> He just starts like this. I'm working, I'll be working with mine over there, too. I'm like, all right, here, I'm going to call it Operation, you know, Pocket Cur. So you'll stay in my pocket, uh -huh. and then when people don't expect it, I'll just ha, and then you'll go to the eyes first. To the eyes, probably. Operation right. little. Friend. But we only do it with the bad guys, hello right? To my little friend. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> you see that tat, uh, red, red tat. You see the tass is just like looking at you, Garde, and it's just like, your friends are kind of weird. Are they always like this? Yes. You're not You're gonna fine. make me I'm shoot really a gun alone. or stab people with a scalpel, are you? No. Okay, appreciate it. You wouldn't be able to effectively wield either weapon. I don't think that your friends understand that. Her, we're gonna save your dad so freaking hard. <laughs> he goes, I guess. Uh, okay, <laughs> to the eyes, to the eyes. <laughs> That's right. You always go for He's the like eyes. Practicing his lunge. You see that mm -hmm. a rat is just like over here with a fucking pole arm scalpel, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wish. Yo, Kerr, your freaking brother over there's lame. <laughs> You got one learn. You're learning surprise <laughs> attacks. This one's doing calm combatives. The other one's just sitting oh, on that Jesus door. Is your brother Christ. okay? Roll me a d20. Me? Yeah, to see like just how persuasive you are to your fucking squirrel. To well, I'm also a hero uh, or a champion. If that has any effect oh, on your role, Christ. You and a, I have. You got a four. I'll okay, so for me, that's probably like a twenty-seven. He looks at you and he goes, "I'm not going to disrespect my brother." No, your brother's disrespecting squirrels right now. Oh. By being lame. You know how you could help us without causing violence? How? We, we come across a door and we can get you through and you could unlock it. That would be super helpful. Again, we can do things. We just can't fight. And Well, you can be a distraction. I'm going to... Jesus fucking Christ. I'm going to all... say this now. It's been 25 minutes in and we haven't stopped talking to the fucking squirrels. I didn't... Okay, we didn't know they spoke English before the uh, episode, so this is sort of on you, bud. They don't speak English. They speak Melrian, actually. That's a language you speak. And strangely enough, it's English. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Universe. I just Basic know the sound it makes when it takes a life. They just stand here like, okay, we get it. Are we, we, we just going to stand we here? We have an eagle we can take over to uh, the desert. You know, it's a little munchkin jungle people then burn him alive or kill him uh, he's our kind of one right we should go back to the wood people and see if they'll help us now that they see we have squirrels they'll probably you know maybe and I believe they're cursed they can't leave the area mm -mm. and I don't want to build a boat out of them yeah I think it's just time to go <laughs> Build a boat out of yeah. them. Let's get ready to go. Yeah. Let's go find Beak Beak. Beak Beak. Beak Beak. beak, beak. All right. <laughs> As you guys walk out of the cave, your footsteps get heavier and heavier. As you start making your way through the exit. And as you do so, you feel almost the same headache throbbing sensation that you had when you first walked in. Oh. Just like the weight of the world pounding on your head. And mm -hmm. flashes of light just hit you continuously over and over. However, this time at a more rapid and more just intense pace. To the point where you feel your nose is start to bleed slightly. And just start trembling and shaking. Eventually, mm -hmm. the pain gets so serious that you nearly, quite nearly pass out. From pure just fatigue and just struggling to walk forward. And as eventually you do, you feel yourself leave the cave. And as you walk out, you stand and you look around. You see everything looks normal as it was when you first entered. However, slightly different. As you look around, you see that there are odd flashes of just like light, just like flashing through the area. Almost like glitches in the sky and in the trees and everything you see. Just shakes of magic. Ripple effects that fl uh, flow through. Your heads continue to pound, your nose has continued to just bleed, like bleed slightly enough to the point where it's annoying until eventually it starts to settle down. Things begin to stabilize more. And as you look behind you, you see that the cave entrance that you were once walking out of 
has now covered itself up again with tree as it's kind of like quickly has grown and overgrown this entrance. It then kind of clicks with you. But yes, this was a different dimension of sorts you were in. You essentially just walked from one plane into another because these caves are magical in nature. And the glitches that you saw, these weird magical fractures, through them you saw things such as flashes of what happened previously, flashes of the war, the Colossi getting captured. I would like specifically Harlow Gardane, be honest with me, this is kind of like an, uh... Okay, Harley, you did good, you got a 16, so I'll tell you what it is for here in a second. Uh, <laughs> Gardane, how in tune with, like, actual, like, magic would you say you are? Not just holy, but just, like, actual magic, not, like, holy magic. I mean, if we're making a distinction between arcane and divine like yes. that... Uh, me marginally... About as much as the average person. Gotcha. So this is going to be more of a Harlow thing. Um, Jackie, you are a fighter. You hit thing with a stick and hands. Um, Harlow, you got a 16. You being the more magical one out of the group and probably having a better understanding of, like, just stuff and, like, arcane magic in general. You realize that you remember reading things when you were younger about curses, about blessings, about gifts, about illusions and such. And it clicks with you that... You've now learned the truth of what had happened, or at least partial truths of what had happened, you know, 500 years ago. Knowing this knowledge and entering a realm that has now been, what you realize, cursed with essentially what is like a mass illusion of sorts, both mental, mainly like a mental illusion, like a modified memory of sorts, mm -hmm. is clashing with your psyches. You shouldn't know this information. The curse or gift or blessing, however, however it is looked at by whoever put it on the land, is not meant for people to know the actual truth. That Melorius was uh, the instigators to a way. That there is another realm out there somewhere. That there is a totally different faction of enemies in a different kingdom. Knowing this information while also living inside of this realm and being actively present here now is essentially what caused this convulsion to happen to you. With the 16, you can only assume that eventually this might get slightly worse. The more you learn, the more you continue to remain here, prolonged over time, who knows what the effects could be. Normally, you probably find this very interesting as a doctor, but usually if it's happening to a patient, not yourself. Uh... The more pockets we enter, the worse these feelings are going to get. So, next time, uh, someone just remind me and I'll try to buff what I can so it's not as bad. Because eventually one of us is going to have a grand mal seizure and uh, I don't want to take care of any of you as vegetables. So... I don't feel so good, Dr. Harlow. <laughs> well, do you want me to make you feel better there, Jackie? Uh, yeah, I got a really bad headache, actually. This is awful. Okay. Um, and I'm going to cast my first non-touch spell. And, and what is that? It's called Relieve there, Jackie. So I could say something comforting to relieve uh, pain, anxiety, discomfort for one hour. You can't be charmed or frightened. And you'll feel the best you've ever felt. So with my comforting words of there, there, Jackie Hartstrong, the gauze man, uh, you've never felt better your entire life. Oh, my goodness. That is that is amazing. I don't know what you did. Or how you did it. I feel like, dude, let's go. I'm grabbing my squirrel. Come with me, Kerr. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Lead the way through these headaches. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, I, we're we're just here. We're we're not the guides. We're here to assist on the the journey. 
then you don't have to respond as much as you do. Okay. Forward! <laughs> he's just, he's just, okay, he's just sitting on your shoulder still. Good. My quiet pet. This is fantastic. <laughs> Onwards! Yeah, I'm stretching a lot. I might skip. Actually, I feel like skipping. I'm going to skip. Okay. Are you guys following uh, Jackie? And where are you guys headed? Are you guys yeah. going back to talk yeah. to the Dweller just, King? Come on, guys, or... let's skip. You guys go back yeah. to the Dollar King, or are you going to the going to find Beak Beak? I guess we gotta find Beak Beak, right? Yep, he's kind of our ride. Okay. Yeah. So realizing that there's not really any hope for the dwellers, at least for now, you guys begin to make your way through the forest, heading back to where at least you think you know the right direction is, which isn't really hard to follow. I mean, you guys did surf ride your way here with the dwellers' assistance, and then you weren't like knocked out; you were, you know, walked to where you were going. And you can pretty easily recall your steps. It wasn't too long ago. However, I do want everybody to roll me just a straight d20. This is going to be a random encounter check. Because it is dark outside now. Huh. Jackie, go ahead. Harlow got a 2. Guardian got a 15. Jackie got an 8. So that's 2 below 10, which means, yes, indeed, we are going to have a random encounter. <laughs> As you're... What? As you were skipping through the squirrel the wood. slash random encounter episode, <laughs> the squirrel slash random encounter episode. As you were skipping through the woods, you notice that it is dark. However, you'd see mm -hmm. no signs of dwellers. It's very odd because there was a bunch of them in abundance here. They were almost watching you when you came into these woods in the first place. However, now that it's dark, you have this very eerie, just weird feeling. What is going on? Hmm. I need who got the lowest roll. Harlow got the two on that roll. She got the lowest roll. I'm gonna say she's probably the least perceptive then of this. Yeah. Fantastic. That is a ten, which is for this creature. That is a tough choice. I'm gonna say that it's gonna do this anyways, but I will explain what the, the effect is here. As you guys are walking through, you guys see that behind you immediately, Harlow, you are <laughs> grabbed with like a spider web from the tree and you see that Harlow uh, was immediately kind of like yanked up slightly but then because of the tough choice she is almost dropped down to the ground immediately Harlow you take one damage as you hit the ground but you are kind of like restrained in this weird thick spider web it didn't pull you up all the way only did one damage however you guys because it's a tough choice look up and see in the trees there are three giant uh like nocturnal uh spiders you see their eyes glow like a, fluores uh, like a fluorescent green color they're giant, I'm going to say, probably the size of, like, Guardian, like, dwarven size of sorts. They have giant, massive, you know, spider-sized legs, or sorry, like, dwarven-sized legs uh, up the scale with Guardian. Three of them in the trees, and the one that had the rope around Harlow breaks it off because he wasn't able to pull her up, and they just make this loud hissing noise. Yes, Jackie? Uh, can I use an ability? Uh, yes, because we're on into combat now. Wait, we might not have to. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I'm going to use the ability Yop. Okay. Spelled Y A W P. I don't know what a Yop is. Uh, I didn't Google it because I'm not that guy. Um, but I did pull it up. Uh, so basically, first I just have to roll a die. Okay. But basically, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to do like one of those. <gasps> and yell at him and try and scare him away. Read to me how it works. Once per scene, you may make a show of bravado to frighten nearby creatures. Any common folk nearby will seek shelter, run away, or attempt to appear non-threatening. And then depending on what I roll, uh, it affects minions. Okay. So, you want me to roll? Go ahead and roll. Tell me what you get. Yop time. 19. Ooh. Uh... One of them just, fl one minion flees the scene. Uh, you see the one that Harlow was uh, wrapped up by immediately just looks and bolts, and he's gone. <gasps> uh, there are only two now in combat. Jackie scares one away immediately. Jackie, that is your turn. Uh, I'm going to say Harlow is going to go last because you were wrapped by the spider web on the ground. You're kind of restrained right now. Guardian, you were up. They were probably about 30 okay. feet above you in trees. Uh, I will pull out my dwarven crossbow. And take a shot. Okay. Roll it up. That is a 17. Very good. Okay. For two damage? Two damage. Okay. You take your crossbow out and you shoot one. And you see that as you shoot, 
green ooze drips out from it where you shot it at, splashing against the tree. And when this green ooze hits the tree, you see it sizzles. <laughs> Jackie, don't hit these up front. Stay back. <laughs> Harlow, you are up. Uh, so I'm like restrained, restrained. Uh, yeah, you were like <laughs> wrapped up yeah. in tight spider web. Okay, Rhett, I need you to take the uh, scalpel and start sawing through. That is your job, little guy. Oh, my You're training's running. coming in dirty. Uh, okay. It, he's I'm so proud of you. Sawing. Just, I don't watch sure how, my kidney. You watch look, my kidney. You look, and it's like he doesn't have a lot of strength to him. I mean, it's a sharp scalpel, so it is like cutting through some of it, but like not super fast. Okay. And she's just going to try to inchworm away restrained if she can. Okay. Um, I will say that with the help of Rat, with the scalpel, I'll let you roll a d20 twice if you want to try to break out. Yeah. First one is an First eight. One. Come on, little dude. Second one is a nine. Nine is a tough choice. I'm going to say that you can break out of it, but doing mm -hmm. so, it is tough. Like, it is, it's hard to do, yeah. and you have to really strain yourself, so you'll take a damage doing it. I'm restraining okay, yourself yeah. so much. I'll do it. And... Right, I'm so proud of you. Oh, fuck, you stabbed me. Okay. You break out of the webs. However, you strain yourself, you do get poked by your scalpel a little bit. Because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not used to this. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. However, next up are the two spiders. You see they both jump down from the tree. One of them shot arrow sticking out of him. Green ooze dripping from the ground. As it drips from the ground, it just kind of like just sizzles slightly, like xenomorph style. Two of them, I'm going to say the first one is going to go after. I'm just going to roll. Uh, uh, I'm just going to roll a d6 on my end. Uh, two, four, six. Uh, two, one, two, three, four, five. Gardain, one lunges at you, jumping forward to take a bite on you. Oh, wait. I got to roll on the... Duh. Here we go. I have the thing for this. With a seven, that is a tough choice as well. I'm going to say that this thing is going to bite you. However, it's going to put itself in a severe disadvantage. When it lands in the bite, it's going to put itself pretty much directly in between all three of you, giving you guys all, like, an advantage on the attack. However, it is going to bite Gardane still. Gardane, you it. take two damage from the piercing. Uh, additionally, you're going to take one damage every turn for this, like, acidic burn that is kind of, like, burning on your flesh right now as it bites into you. Do I take one right now and then... Yeah, you take, yeah you take two from the pierce, one from the acidic damage, and then... On each of your turns, you're going to take an additional one. Okay. Okay. The second one, two, four, six. One, two, three. Jackie, the next one's going after you. He lunges forward. These things are fast and very quick on their feet, almost kind of like dashing back and forth. Hard to keep your eyes on because it is dark. The only thing that's really letting them, letting you see them at night is their glowing green eyes. And the acidic <laughs> is on the ground. That is a natural one. It completely misses. I'm going to say with a natural one, with a catastrophe, Jackie, you do some kung fu, like, martial arts type stuff. Smack it out of the way. It crashes into uh, the, the other, oh my god, eh, the other acid spider. As it hits the ground, you see they both kind of, like, fumble across from each other, and, bo and all two of them, or both of them, are in the center of all three of you as you stand around them. Top of the order, Jackie. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna drop a fucking elbow from way too high up and okay. hit one of these spiders. Roll it up. It's what the Lord would want me to do. <laughs> Jackie, that is a I, six. You said I get to roll twice, though, yes, right? Yes, you do. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. That is a five. <laughs> so you get the six, which is a tough choice, Jackie. I will say that you can hit it and you can do the two damage to it. However, you're coming down with such blunt force that you know if you hit it, you're probably going to cause some of this acidic blood or ooze to probably splash against you because you are going to, like, crack a carapace and send blood your way. Or I can just miss. Yes. I jump up to drop the elbow because I'm all excited because I feel the best that I've ever felt. But yeah. then, like, on the way down, I'm like, I actually hate spiders. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to miss. Okay. And just hit the ground next to them. Okay. And I'll just, I'll get up. All right. Uh, Gardane. Okay. Um. I will say the one that you shot, it went after, um, oh my god, went after you. It just makes sense. Okay. Mm. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch from my, uh, crossbow to my billow. Yep. 
and I'll take a step back and attack. Okay. That is a 15 that hits. Okay. For another two damage, you see this thing still stands. Uh, your bill hooks like a longer, like it's like what, 10 foot long? Or like how, how, it's like longer weapon, right? Like give it some reach on it. There's no actual like reach. Yeah. Rule, I will say, so I will say though, because it is a bill hook that you, when you do slash it, some of this, uh, this green kind of like ooze does splash out, but because you are using your bill hook in a good distance away, it doesn't splash back against you. Okay. Uh, it still stands. However, you see that it's very bloodied with this acidic goo dropping and dripping on the ground. Harlow, you are up. I shoot oh. the one over at Gardane. Okay. Pew. Pew. Uh, Harlow, that is going to be an eight. That is a tough choice. Oof. As you shoot with with the gun, right? Uh, even with advantage. Oh wait, I'll give the advantage. Uh, did the second one not show up? It did not. Go ahead and roll again. Okay. So, there we go. Uh, nine. So the. Okay. Nine. Yeah. Gar Still roll, tough choice. Yeah. Pause for one second, Gardane. Go ahead and roll again to see if you end up getting like a nat twenty or something, just to just to see. Because I forgot roll. you. This if you get like a nat twenty. Because you didn't roll your... Okay, it's 15 again. All right, uh, tough choice, so Harlow. You pull your gun, you go to shoot the one of the Gardane. Um, I will say that you can hit it and do the damage to it. However, you are going to graze Gardane. Uh, I graze Gardane. Okay, <laughs> Gardane, you get grazed for two damage. Like, right on, like, the thigh. Just... <laughs> uh, but the spider also takes two damage. And with that, too, you see it lunges up and is beginning to jump towards Gardane. But you hit it right in the head. And you see it drops in the ground, dead. You were at a distance with your gun. You don't take any splash acid damage. And Gardane, you as well, too, were far enough away because it was jumping at you. There's one that remains. He stands and he hisses. Uh, let's see. One second here. Let me figure. Uh, he was the one that was, uh, was going for Jackie last turn, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's in the yeah, middle. I'm still squared up with this guy. Yeah. He is in the middle. He is going to try something here. He is going to use his ability called. Hold on a second. Let me change the. Come on. Where is it? I know he has it. Ba, 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 ba. There it is. He's going to use his uh, ability called Hunt, which is what happened to Harlow in the first uh, the first round. He's going to take his web and try to grab somebody and start running with them. The only reason gotcha. that it didn't happen to Harlow is because it was a tough choice. She got grappled. He didn't get a chance to pull her up all the way. Uh, I'm going to roll 246. 246. And that's going to be Guardian. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, uh, Guardian, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's totally <laughs> worth it. I will heal you. <laughs> Guardian is looking rough right now. Oh, actually? I yeah, have... I got hit. I took a point of damage. I took damage at the end of my turn because it's a a dot effect, oh, so you and you grazed me. Like four. Okay. I will. I will find you. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do this real quick. Not the situation right now, but we're gonna finish this up. Okay. Okay. Then roll a d20 to see if this goes Gardane or not. Oh Jesus Christ. No, don't hit Gardane. With a nine, tough choice. It does grapple Gardane. It tries to pull you away. Is there time However, for a reaction? I will say this. It goes to grab Gardane and pull him away. However, the stream breaks as he's running with a tough choice. Gardane still grappled on the ground as the spider runs into the night. We're going to have to call it. We have a situation going on right now. Got it. So okay. that's that. Good place to end it on. All uh, right. Okay. Everybody, we will see you next week for Mortal Webs. Thank you for watching. Yes, Sorry, I got to cut it short. We got you guys know what's going on. So yeah, yeah you're fine. Yep. Um, Nothing but love you guys. Thank you for everybody who came out to watch the show live. Shout out to everybody who's watching it afterwards. And we'll be back next week on Wednesday, baby. Yes, yep. right. Love you. Goodbye.